Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to compare these pairs of fractions and figure out uh, if one is bigger than the other or if they are equal. So pause the video, give it a shot, see if you can find some ways to do that, and then press play when you're ready to talk about it. Alright, so I, I definitely need to make a video that just summarizes basic strategies, but uh, with each pair of fractions I might use a different strategy. For example, let me start with this one right here. I think this is the easiest um, out of all of these because um, it, it sets it up so nicely. The denominators, 3 and 3, they're both equal. So here is a strategy that James Tanton calls wishful thinking. And in this case, the wishful thinking is, oh, wow, I mean, this is already set up for us. If my denominators are equal, the bottom numbers are equal, or the top numbers are equal, the fractions are easy to compare. So in some of these other problems, I might use, um, I might scale up or reduce a fraction to make the denominators equal, but here it's already set up for me. So the wishful thinking strategy is to, is to say, wow, I really wish that, you know, blank, the denominators are equal or the numerators are equal. And in this case, since it's already set up, this is a nice example of what wishful thinking is going for which is equal denominators or equal numerators. In this case, two-thirds is bigger than one-third, and that's easier to compare because we're dealing with thirds. Right? If we have a little shape right here, and this is, let's say we split it in three pieces, one-third would simply be one of the three boxes shaded, and two-thirds would be twice as large. So two-thirds is bigger than one-third. Now let's skip over to this problem. So the wishful thinking strategy is thinking, wow, I really wish these two denominators were the same. I can also do the same with the numerators, uh, but I'll just show the denominators here. So I could reduce four-ninths, right, or I could scale up two-thirds. So let me scale up two-thirds because I know three times three is nine, so I'll take two-thirds and I'll multiply it by three over three. I have to multiply the top, the numerator, and the denominator by the same amount. I have to scale the whole fraction up. If I don't do this, it will change the fraction. If I just multiply the bottom and not the top, or the top and not the bottom, I'll get a new number, and I don't want that. I want the same number, but with a nine as a denominator. So I multiply these two fractions, we get three times two is six, and three times three is nine. So six over nine is the same as two over three. So now my problem, you know, here's my wish. My wish is that the denominators are equal, and now I can make it happen. Here it is, two equal denominators. Now I'd rather have six ninths than four ninths. I know that's bigger. So what about the next two? Could I use wishful thinking? Could I get the numerators or denominators equal? Yes. But notice like in this one right here, um, I had to multiply the first fraction by eight over eight to get 80 in the denominator. And the second fraction by 10 over 10 to get, also get 80 in the denominator. Or I can multiply both by five over five sorry, 4 over 4 here to get 40 in the denominator, and 5 over 5 to get 40, but that's two steps. So then I'm thinking, well, maybe there's an easier way. So here's an example where we can use landmark fractions to quickly figure this problem out. So landmark fractions are friendly fractions, like a half. So I'm going to use one half here as a reference point. What does that mean? Well, I know that 5 out of 10 would be a half. So 8 out of 10 is bigger than one half. So I know that this fraction right here, I'll write it this way, is bigger than 1 half. The second fraction is less than 1 half. A half is bigger than that. How do I know that? Because, well, 3 out of 8 is not a half. 4 out of 8 would be a half. So 3 of, out of 8 is less than that. So if 3 out of 8 is less than a half and 8 out of 10 is more than a half, 8 out of 10 has to be bigger. I can use the same logic in this, right? I can use a landmark fraction. And the way I might use that is to say, okay, well, 3 out of 5, well, it's bigger than 1 half because uh, a half of 5 is 2 and a half, and 3 is, this numerator here, is bigger than 2 and a half. So it's bigger than a half. The second fraction, 5 out of 12, that's less than 1 half. I know 6 is a half of 12, so if I had 6 twelfths, that would be exactly 1 half. So if this is less than a half and this is bigger than 1 half, 3 fifths is larger. All right, I hope this helped.